I'm sure people ask this a lot of you, but um, what are some key things on knowing when someone's lying to you or not? So it goes back to what we talked about, body language, verbal language, and paralinguistics. So what happens with body language if someone is lying? It's easy and it's not easy. So what I want to say with this, it's really studying human behavior and really assessing the person across from you. Now, if you know someone and you're able to develop a baseline, like you know this person, you know when they're talking to you, how they typically carry themselves, and then you look for a deviation in their character. So if you ask somebody a really stressful question, how are they going to respond? I remember once I was interviewing a woman. It was for a job um, because we had to, you had to take a polygraph to get into the service. And during the interview, I had to ask her about her drug history. And the whole interview, for example, she's sitting like this. She's nodding her head. We're connecting. It's great. And the minute I start asking her about her drug experimentation, her legs started doing this. Just this. Nothing else. Just up and down, up and down. So I'm watching this and I'm thinking... Could be a fluke, could be something. So we talked for a little bit, we changed the conversation. When I changed the conversation away from drugs, her legs stopped. Then I'm thinking, okay, I need to go back to this to see if there's an issue here. So I brought the conversation back. I'm like, hey, I have another question about what we talked about earlier about your drug experimentation. And the legs oh started doing God. this. And so in that moment, I knew, I'm like, okay, something's bothering her with this question. Now, I didn't want to make the assumption she's a liar. Right. Could be maybe her husband does drugs, her father does drugs, or who knows, or maybe it is her. And so at that point, I become curious. And when you become curious, when you learn to read people's nuances, you become curious and then you ask the follow-up questions. Then you start, ah, I need to pay attention, red flag. And so that's where body language comes in. Mm -hmm. What are they doing that's different from what they've done before? Because when we're stressed out, our body bleeds information. So you can sit there and be really calm and collected and lie to somebody. But sometimes the body can't control it. It's too much. There's too much happening. And, you know, there's also this, this, con this concept about eye contact. Mm, oh, you know, right. you know, look me in the eyes and tell, you, tell me the truth, right? I can look you in the eyes all day long and lie, lie, <laughs> lie. So it's really just understanding that person. But if you notice mm. that I'm always looking at you in the eyes and then the minute I start to tell you something that you're concerned about, I look away. Mm. Now you're like, why did she just look away? This whole time she's looking at me in the eyes. I ask her this difficult question. Now she shifts her gaze. Mm. So you're looking, for, you're looking at the difference. What changed in me? And now with, with language, there's also things to look at in language. Just a lot of times it has to do with paying attention. So if I say to you, Lisa, you know, what time did you get home last night? And you say to me, well, you know, I usually get home around six. Did you answer mm. the question? But you'd be surprised how many people will let that go and they will move on. I didn't ask you what time you usually get home. I asked you what time did you get home last night. Because so people are trying to avoid lying directly. Is that why they do it? And yes. And it slips through the cracks. It does. Well, look, people, we all know it's wrong to lie. So we don't like lying. So the, the most popular way we lie mm. is through omission. We will leave something out. We will be vague in our language. And so we really want to listen to the language. Are people answering your question? Um, when you ask a question, do they respond back with a question? Who, me? Are you talking to me? <laughs> it could be a stalling tactic. Yes, it's me. There's nobody else in the room. It's just you and I. Who else would be asking you? And so listening to the language that people use. Also, another indicator is usually um, when we speak, we'll say I. I feel this way. I this. I went here. I that. I, I, I. What you'll tend to see in verbal language is somebody who doesn't use I, uh, it me means that there's a lack of commitment, that they're telling you something, but they're not committed to it. Mm -hmm. So think of the sentence. If I say to you, uh, miss you, love you, can't wait to see you. Okay. I miss you. I love you. I can't wait to see you. There's more of a commitment on that latter one. So mm -hmm. you can possibly assume, again, assumption, that the first person really doesn't miss you all that much, really doesn't love you all that much, doesn't care whether they see you. And so uh, there's so many clues in the things we say. Then also how we say them. You know, do people speak with conviction? Are they vague? So when it comes to deception, people who lie are typically vague because when you're lying, there's so much more you have to remember. They won't be as detailed. Mm. What up guys, Lisa here. Thanks so much for watching this episode. And if you haven't already subscribed, click that little bell right in front of you. Click, click, click away. We release episodes every Wednesday, so be sure to get notified. Till next time, go be the hero of your own life.